What is a tilted uterus and does it impact your fertility? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. And today I wanna to talk about your uterus and what is a tilted uterus? I get asked this all the time. It's probably one of the top questions. And I think we can break this down in a quick video and help you understand your anatomy and your body a little bit better. First of all, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I am a fertility doctor and we talk about your body and your fertility and I love it if you want to subscribe and support. This allows more people to find these videos and I'm just so thankful for this community. Now, your uterus, let's just think about it in a couple different planes. Your uterus is attached to the base of your pelvis. So if you're standing up, we can think about your uterus in this form, standing in your body. It is rooted at the base, and that is close to where the cervix is. Kind of think about your pelvis. And at the top of your uterus is going to be where your fallopian tubes come off. And so your uterus, think about it like one of, this is a terrible example, but think about those balloon guys who are by the mattress shop or the car sales place, and they're rooted at the base. That's kind of what happens to your uterus as well. You have a fallopian tube coming off each side and then your ovaries. Your ovaries are also rooted to the side of the pelvis. They're not connected to the fallopian tubes. There is an attachment between them and your uterus and them and your pelvis. So your ovaries are on their own different axis. Essentially though, the uterus does move and twist and tilt to accommodate what's in your body. So we think about your body, in your front plane, if you're standing up, so in front of the uterus is your bladder. So when your bladder is really distended, it is going to push your uterus backwards. And then behind your uterus is actually your rectum. So if you're really constipated, it's gonna push your uterus forward. And on each side, you have different things, but you do have your ovaries. And so if your ovaries are getting enlarged, like what happens with IVF or with ovulation induction medications, your uterus can actually twist and tilt to get out of the way. And we know that when I do embryo transfer is a great example because we're watching with ultrasound, we can see that the uterus may be twisted or tilted in an interesting direction if your ovaries are bigger, if you've just come off of a fresh IVF cycle, or if we're doing a cycle where we're getting your ovaries to grow. So we know this, the uterus typically shifts around. When we're talking about a tilted uterus, the number one time this comes into play is if you're getting your pap smear done or you're going for your annual visit. What is going to happen is your doctor is going to put the speculum in the vagina and they see your cervix. So what happens is if now we kind of switch our anatomy. Okay, so if we imagine now that this is the cervix and then this is the uterus, I'm putting the speculum here and I'm looking at the cervix. And so that is the direction that we're looking into. And what we're going to see is a cervix kind of pop as we open the speculum, we should see a cervix right there. And that is when the uterus is in mid plane or just kind of normal straight. If I pass an embryo transfer catheter or an IUI catheter, when the uterus is in the mid plane, goes in the cervix, whoop, straight line, easy peasy. Okay. Now that's, some people have that, but most people are actually a little bit antiverted, which means the uterus is tilted just slightly, not a ton, but just slightly anterior or towards the abdominal wall. So this is your bladder and your abdominal wall. This is your rectum and your butt and your back. Your uterus is tilted a teeny bit up. This means when I put the speculum in, the cervix is looking a little bit down. And so your uterus can be tilted a little bit antiverted. That's pretty standard for the majority of people. Now it can be tilted a lot antiverted. This can happen when you've had prior surgery, most notably a prior C-section. Because when you do a C-section, you're cutting from the abdominal wall down and you take the bladder off the uterus get the baby out, sew it back up, put things back together, but that uterus might get stuck to that anterior abdominal wall. And now I'm putting my speculum in the vagina, but the cervix is way down here looking down. So you got to kind of dive and dip it. 
to get into view. So that is a version of normal, but it's just a little more abnormal and can indicate some scarring. But people have antiverted uteruses. You can also have a retroverted uterus, which is where your uterus tips backwards. This one is less common. I will frequently tell people this is like having red hair. Your uterus is dipped backwards. And the reason why it always throws us off is because when we put our speculum in, we're looking for that cervix mid. Okay, it's not there. I'll go to the next most common place and look down to see if you're antiverted and it's not there. And now I have to go look up because if you're retroverted, your cervix is actually facing up. This is less common, but it can happen. And sometimes it's just normal variation. But it also can sometimes happen when there's significant scarring inside the peritoneal or the abdominal cavity. So classic here is endometriosis. Endometriosis loves to get in this posterior portion of the uterus, under the uterus. And so what happens is it just grows there. That kind of makes sense because when you're like standing upright, right, here's our uterus, it just kind of falls to the lowest point it can get, which is under the uterus. Since the bladder's up here, this is a much lower place. And so it gets under here and it gets really inflammatory and inflammatory stuff is really sticky. And then what happens is doom, your uterus gets stuck back here. And so sometimes when we do an exam and you're really retroverted, you should be having somebody ask the question or you might hear them say, oh, your uterus is tilted backwards or it's retroverted or I feel signs of endometriosis. And you can also sometimes feel endometriosis down if you're doing a bimanual exam. You can feel some of these nodules that can be specific. So the uterus moves, it tilts around and normal mobility is good. The uterus should be moved. If it's stuck and fixed in a position, that's not normal. And that could be from scar tissue like endometriosis, it could be from prior abdominal surgery, bleeding internally, an appendix, inflammation, a bunch of different things. But the uterus position might reflect that scar. Now, does the position of the uterus impact your fertility? Ultimately, no, it, it doesn't because sperm are so microscopic. They do not care if your cervix is like straight on or if they have to go up a mountain or they go down a slide, the sperm do not care, they will get there. If it is in a position because of a medical problem, like if it's tilted because there's a lot of endometriosis, well, endometriosis can impact your fertility. Or if your tubes are blocked because of scar tissue, that can impact your fertility. So sometimes it can be a sign that makes us want to investigate more. Maybe it makes us want to get an ultrasound to see if you have a fibroid that can shift your uterus, or we want to do something to see if you have endometriosis or we talk to you about it. But the position of the uterus and cervix itself does not cause infertility. If it reflects an underlying disease, then it might. Why do we tell you this? We just are small talking while we're doing your exam. I'll be really frank with you. And we just cannot help ourselves but to comment. So if your cervix is not straight on there or super easy to find, sometimes we'll say things not thinking about that it might really worry you. Like, oh, this is all fine. Your uterus is just a little bit tilted. To me, I'm telling you this so you know why it's longer to find your cervix or do your pap smear. But to you, you might be like, oh my goodness, my uterus is tilted. What does that mean? It also might change from a fertility treatment standpoint when we do IUI or embryo transfers, tools we need. This is why I love a practice embryo transfer so I can have the right speculum, the right type of catheter. And also why you will hear to have a full bladder with your embryo transfer. And the reason is twofold. One is that if most people are a little antiverted, if your bladder gets full, it is going to push your uterus into a mid plane. So we always like a straight shot when we can get it. And the second is the sound waves from the bladder, from that liquid with abdominal ultrasound, because we put the abdominal ultrasound upon your abdomen while we do the embryo transfer. The more liquid that's there, the sound waves transmit better and we can see the inside of the uterus better. So it both improves ease of the procedure and visualization because of better transmission of the sound waves. So ultimately, a tilted uterus is a normal variation, just like hair color. It's like having red hair if it's tilted, retroverted, having blonde hair if it's anaverted, and brown hair if it's midplane. Doesn't mean anything. The uterus should and is mobile. If it is tilted, 
or appear stuck or in a weird position, and you have concern for scar tissue, concern for endometriosis, painful periods, pain with intercourse, GI changes with your period, concern for fibroids, like very heavy periods, if you have one-sided pain, concern for a cyst, those are things you should share with your doctor so we could start the investigation for other problems that could impact your fertility. All right, I hope this helped you understand a tilted uterus a little bit more. As always, I would love it if you would subscribe. You can also get more information on the As a Woman podcast, and you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.